Hey guys, how you doing? This is Rich. Hey, just wanted to give you a heads up. This video is a little bit long and it's sort of in two parts. The first part I did on an iPhone, which is what I'm recording on now, and the microphone works really good uh, in the iPhone mode, but with the iPhone, you can't pause when you're recording. So the first part of this video is about me uh, initially getting started uh, working on this machine. Ended up being a uh, basically a uh, blade break um, cable adjustment and then a primer bulb uh, that was really it and then I went ahead and adjusted the valves which is really the last uh, about three quarters into the video but anyway that's really what I did uh, this is a little intro to this video and if you're if you like this stuff please subscribe and uh, like the video make some comments and as I get into the valve adjusting portion of this video uh, I ask you, it's kind of a little quiz, uh, to try to determine which valve is the intake, which is the exhaust. And if you work on a lot of these motors, sometimes you're going to be scratching your head going, uh, okay, which one's which? Yeah, the video is a little uh, long because of the iPhone situation in the beginning of the video, so I just didn't want to cut, have to cut it up and edit it uh, too much. Uh, so, But it's kind of cool. If you're working on a lot of lawnmower engines and stuff and you're interested in that stuff, uh, me talking through this kind of like I'm thinking out loud as I'm going through my troubleshooting steps uh, to get this thing up and going. I got it for a pretty on the cheap. Uh, it's a 1999 uh, Yardman 12A something something something. It's got a 6.5 Briggs and Stratton engine on it that uh, appears to be great you know in pretty good shape. Uh, the valves did need some adjustment and I'm hoping that I did it right. It did run after I did the valve adjustments, it ran after, before I did the valve adjustments. I was just checking them. And uh, that's what the end of this video is about, so if you keep watching. But uh, it's a good, uh, I get a little chatty, you know, but uh, as I'm grabbing my tools and stuff like that, you know, this is basically an unedited uh, version, kinda, uh, the first part of this video anyway. Um, but I think it's gonna give you some insight as you go on to, you know, the, a lot of this stuff is pretty common finds, you know, and problems when you uh, get these mowers that won't start, you know, and it's just, you know, the basic, is it getting compression? Is it getting fuel, proper air fuel mixture to the combustion chamber? And is it getting ignition? In this case, it wasn't getting ignition, you know, and some people think spark plug, you know, just a regular old, uh, you know, homeowner, pushing a lawnmower on the weekends is going to think spark plug, you know, if it's not, I'll just change the spark plug. Uh, spark plugs are really just an indicator if, you know, your engine's not running because of a bad spark plug, it's because something else caused it to be bad. So anyways, uh, please watch the video. Thanks for coming by. Subscribe if you're into this stuff. This video is a little bit long. I think it's pretty interesting. So if you take the time to uh, listen to it, maybe, um, to learn a thing or two I'm learning you know just when I worked on this one here and I've been working on them I started learning actually in school to work on small engines and lawnmower engines when I was 16 so uh, it's been a long time uh, that I've uh, been working on them but uh, you still learn so I think this video right here thanks for watching I think it should be uh, informative and educational Okay, so on this one, we have the model here. Okay, I think we do 12A. And I took and tried to fire it up, put a little uh, spark plug juice or starter spray, carburetor cleaner, whatever you want to call it, into the uh, intake here and not even a pop. And then I started moving the, okay, was that the off? Oh, that sh this should be full throttle like this when the spring is, it's got more tension on it. That should be full on, so then this should be off. And actually that should be touching a ground wire right there. Um, or maybe the ground wire is coming off of this mechanism. I can't see right now. It should be coming off of this mechanism um, to touch coil to ground but right now there's no spark I took the plug out put it up against the uh, the metal there and I got nothing um, there does seem to be compression um, the bail handle here is staying 
kind of closed. It's kind of stuck right now. It does move back and forth on the side there when you move it. It does go back and forth, but you got to do it manually. The spring back action doesn't work on it. Um, so no spark. Why is there no spark? We're going to find out here in just a second. I'm going to grab a uh, Phillips and get this cover off uh, just to be able to get down and see what's going on right here in this mechanism that's the uh, kill switch should be under here the wire that's uh should be coming off of this mechanism right here and then going to the coil to shut it off when you release the bail handle so let me take a look at this let me go grab my phillips real quick and sorry about the camera stand here and let me go grab this phillips and we'll get on it. Haven't really checked it for compression. I'm going to feel if there is any. So I'm just going to be pulling the string manually up there while I put my uh, finger against the spark plug hole. And it's way down in here. It's kind of dirty. It's... All right. Feels like some pretty good compression, and this has uh, overhead uh, valves, so that makes it pretty easy to do a uh, valve adjustment on it. Make sure the gap's okay. It probably hasn't been uh, adjusted in a long time. 1999, probably not for a long time. So we're gonna go ahead and get these. Uh, looks like just two screws holding this sh shroud cover decorative cover on probably gonna have to take the gas cap off fine and that pops off the gas smells a little funky now i'm looking here to see if there's any wire okay there is a, there appears to be a wire i'm gonna have to see if that is connected to anything okay if you look right down in there does appear to be a wire of some kind on that mechanism right there. So it does, there seems to be one. So is that being constantly grounded or what? <coughs> we could, what I will do is take and pull this out real quick. And then I'll check for spark again so that wire is just going through a little there's a little tang here you push this down you can pull that wire out you grab a small needle nose plier to get in there kind of work that out of there or a big one whatever little nose if i can find my small one real fast i'll use it sometimes it hides Okay, there I found it. So get over here and I'll try to kind of get this. I'm not going to disturb anything too much. This should pull right out of here. Yeah, like that. Now, see how that kind of goes right in there? A little hole, and you press down on this, and it should slide right underneath in this little hole here. So straighten this out so when it goes back in there all right so now this is the kill wire when i go to test for spark this time make sure this isn't grounding on anything just hanging free in the air there just like that perfect right there so it's just kind of like dangling it's not grounding now i'm going to come around and see if i'm getting anything at that plug I don't know if you can see that or not. I can get a better, better angle on that for you. And you can always, if you're brave, you can just uh, stick your hand right on on that spark plug. Okay, I got spark. See that? Let me try to get this in the frame. Yep. You can see it. So then if I probably put this back 
most definitely if I put that back in place. Sorry. <coughs> Still got the zoomed. If I put this back into place, it's going to ground. So why is it grounding? Now I'm up on the bale on the handle. I'm going to check the operation of this mechanism here and see what's going on with it. So, so the, the big issue here, in my opinion, is it just didn't have spark. Okay. So it may just be an issue with this. This whole mechanism right here just might be getting caught up. Okay, so this just might need to be loosened up. And sometimes these switches, yeah, so that needs to be coming this way for it not to make contact with this right here. Okay. That might not be getting the full throw. Should be coming in contact. I'm not seeing it. Even uh, looking down back in there underneath there, hard to see. You look down in there, underneath there, it's a real tight spot. Right down in here, if you get it to focus over there and zoom a little bit. Right up underneath here is another mechanism that comes up and it manually you can see that action back in there let's see see that coming forward when I release it it's coming toward us and when I pull it back it's coming away it comes toward us it's coming away okay it's toward us that should be the kill position with the bail released and then when I squeeze the bail, it, it moves. Watch that one right there. Yeah, watch that one right there. Squeeze the bail, it moves away. Release the bail, and it should come back into that position. So it may just be an issue with lubricating this stuff right here. All right. Let's see if I can even get it to pop and try to start. I'm suspecting that, uh, you know, with this magneto. So this mechanism is going to need adjusting for sure. Maybe just put some PB blaster on there and work it a little bit. But I'm going to see if I can even get this to pop right now. I should be able to get it to start and just try to start. For a minute and we'll uh, see what's going on with it. So I got a little carburetor cleaner to prime it. It may just work without it. This was fouled up earlier. There's a little, there was a little debris in there. Not any mole and I'm putting it back in the hole. Find the hole. There it is. Okay. So spark plug going back in. I'll try pulling it a few times without uh, any uh, magic juice. And then if it doesn't pop, like I, I didn't feel any positive uh, gas priming. And I can see right down inside of this carburetor intake that the, it doesn't look like the primer's working show you what I mean here. So like you've got the primer bulb over here on this side and then right down in here when you do that you should see some type of fluid you know you should see the gas 
going into the uh, throat of the carburetor there, but it's not it's not shooting anything out, and that just could be because the carburetor is gummed up, whatever. So let's try to give it a couple pulls and see if it does anything. Cracking that whip. Cracking that whip. Okay. Cover back on. Just a. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull it a couple times, see what happens. So that wire is completely off. Okay. The grounding wire is not connected. Okay, I'm going straight juice in there. Is the wire still dangling out nicely for us? No, it's like it's sucked in there somewhere. Okay. Now it's good. Okay, I don't think it's touching anything now. Yeah, okay. It's in the open air, not grounding. All right. Still not even. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't have the plug. I don't have the plug connected. Put the plug in, tightened it up. Didn't put the uh, spark plug boot on there. All right, let's get let's get to popping. So now all I gotta do to kill this is come over and ground the magneto wire. Okay, it's starting to smoke pretty good. Alright. Should be okay. I'm not gonna freak out about it yet. Okay, so I was just able to touch that wire. This thing's smoking. Hopefully that doesn't continue. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, use some PB Blaster and get this all lubed up. I th I'm suspecting that the, uh, the cable might not be the right length might not be the right length cable and I I think I've got a couple of these laying around actually we'll see I'm gonna go ahead and pop this. Well, it doesn't really help. Um, I'm gonna lube lube this up. Try to work it a lot back and forth. See if I can get this. Might even put a. Another knot in it. So it was grounding. And I'll just put the uh, wire back in there. Now sometimes it could just be that the uh, that mechanism that holds the wire has failed right in here, and it just grounds even though it's insulated and it's designed not to ground until it's touched from underneath by that uh, thing I showed you a little earlier. All right, let's try to get this back in the hole. Probably not going to want to go back. And so to get this back in, here's a little, if you ever played Operation as a little kid, that Operation game, I'm trying to get this back into that little hole there. So I got to push down like on that end of the thing while I 
maneuver the wire into the hole. There's a little tang there. That you gotta push down. See, my mic's still on. Yep, still on. So here's a little tang that you gotta kinda push down here on, go on the end of it there and push down. Oh, all this grease on here, you can't really see it. Uh, see over there, you gotta push that, see how that goes down. And then there's a hole right here that just goes, there it goes, and you release it, boom. That's it, that's how it goes back in there. And so check that a lot of times. I mean, that uh, this could be grounding, this mechanism might not be operating uh, exactly the way it's supposed to. So just some stuff to check. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna lube all this stuff up right here and just coat it down, get some PB blaster on there and see if that makes any difference. I'm gonna see if it'll start just with what I did there. Really running pretty good. Worried about that oil. Let's see how full this is. Hopefully it's just overfilled. Somebody overfilled it. Seems to be at the right level, but yeah, I don't like how it's smoking there. Who knows what was going on with this thing. <clears throat> okay. What are we doing now? Let's see if it'll fire. That is just not, there's no. So it's probably grounded. Gonna get this out of the way. So pulling it, okay, moving it this way then. Should be off. Okay, pulling it back is getting that away from it. Oh, it's almost like this engine's on backwards or something. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I need to pull this back some more. Or go up another, going up another hole. All right, so on the bail handle, I noticed that there's another hole we can move up to make this cable come out further this way. So figure out how to get this out of here, move it up one hole. Let's see if that makes a difference in the travel over there of that uh, mechanism down here. right here, so I'm squeezing it. Oh yeah. But I just don't think it's the right cable. Yep. So there's something about this cable that just is the wrong, but basically gonna be, I think that will work. See, this can probably go up here. Let me get that. Phillips here. It's got a uh, anchor nut back there recessed into the plastic. And that's going to lengthen this a little bit further away from the mechanism down there. Bring it up one. And then hopefully be able to get that bail to still fit into the highest hole. And then uh, I think after that, the uh, travel is going to be about perfect. Okay. Let's see if this will work. So we've got this in here. Put it in the hole. Put it in the hole over here, highest hole. Oh, we got some travel now, man. 
that's great. It's just kind of hanging over, hanging over the edge of the handle here a little bit. See so yeah, how it's kind of, it's, it's fairly comfortable though. It's pretty comfy. I think that would work. Let's see, so it should start. Boom. <clears throat> Easy job. Okay. So what I will do is cut. Uh, this is kind of nice, some nice gribbage to have on here, but it's it's toast. So I might find something to put on there, but I'm going to cut that off. This is just like junky or leave it on there. But I like taking pictures of these things. And uh, let's see if it even drives. Didn't try that. <clears throat> and if anybody in the future ever wanted to get the right, the specific uh, cable for this, they could, I guess. All right, let's see. Here's the moment of truth. Is this thing transmission even good? All right. Now what? It was just starting. What's going on with that? Is it a spark issue again? Or is it not getting fuel now? It has to be getting fuel. Oh, it drives. And it can drive fast. Nice. Very nice. That thing's a monster. I got a commercial guy that's going to want this thing. That's awesome. So what do you think? How much? If you're watching this and enjoying it, whatever, make a comment. What do you think this thing would go for in the real world? Yeah, that primer's not working though, man. That's the thing. And this primer bulb's toast. That's That might be a reason why uh, it's cracked. So, I might have to pull that out, if it can even be pulled out. I'm not real, real familiar with this one. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you. <sighs> so, I was about ready to put it back together. And then notice that, yeah, that primer bulb there. I can see that thing. Kind of zoom in a little bit and focus. Yeah. That one right there is just cracked <laughs> at the bottom part. See that kind of opening. Now, on the sides here, it was covered up. I was kind of looking for these little catch edges or that primer bulb slips in so there's these two little tangs it's plastic assembly you gotta press in those tangs to be able to pull this out and I'm sure that I, I would have another primer bulb and then this might actually work too yeah it actually does work so with a, a good primer bulb because I did see some uh, gasoline when I put my finger over there firmly <clears throat> over the primer bulb, you know, sealing the crack. I could actually see the um, fuel. If you look down in there, there's some fuel way down in there. You can see it moving around, so um, that's good. So just a matter of uh, taking that primer bulb down. Sorry about all the uh, jerky camera. But this is, I think, good stuff. If you find one of these older mowers and... Just uh, lawnmower crap in general. Let's see if we can uh, get a screwdriver on that. Pop it off on each side. Hopefully, don't have. Hopefully, don't have to take this whole 
thing apart. I'm sure it would make it a lot easier, but I'm not going to do it today. No, I don't want to be able to push on this, see how I'm kind of I'm kind of getting that started there. Getting that little plastic, and I'm trying to preserve this little plastic piece so it's popping right there. So that's basically kind of popping out. Do the same thing on the other side. I might even adjust the valves on this thing just for giggles. So this thing's destroyed anyway, so I'm going to try to, it's free on one side, so I'm going to try to pull it out, and then we can see that that's kind of cockeyed in there now. You can probably grab it out, though, but it's hanging on by the little tangs here on this side. If I get that out, maybe I'll just pull this out, try not to break it. Try not to break it. just a little bit you just gotta press down and be able to pull out too but like they say it's sometimes not easy to pull out Really kind of going by feel on this. I can see it, sort of see it, sort of in the shadows there. There's not a way to get a good angle on it. Oh, speaking of angle. These come in handy sometimes. Push that in and get it really kind of started. It's really being a pain over here on this side here. Let's see if I can get that. I can't even turn the light on on this thing when I'm rolling, I guess. So, but it's right here, right in that area. And he's got to press that tang down in there. Patience helps with this one, but I'm running out. Let's get it out. Get it out. Okay, so this one should be easy. Let me, let me start with this side. Get it unlocked, and then we'll unlock the other side next. But this one, of course, does not want to come out at all. I can't really see what the hell I'm doing. So, yeah, I don't think I have a bulb for that. But if you did need a bulb, you would look at the engine manual for that. I'm just trying to get a little more light on it. So I can see what I'm doing a little better. So it should go. See, it's got to go in and then back that way. There, I think I popped it. Yep. And it's much easier on this side to do. On the outside, nothing's in the way, really. Boy, but it sure doesn't want to. Once, once one of the sides is out, they must make a special tool for this, probably. <laughs> probably do. I just don't know. There it is. Okay, it's coming out. So we were able to save this thing without destroying it. And that's that's nice. So I'm going to look in my uh, box of bulbs. Bucket of bulbs. Got all kinds of sizes. Probably not that size.
<sighs> we'll see. Might get lucky. Might get lucky. It's a pretty big bulb, though. We got one right here. All right. Found a old one right here. And it looks to be the same uh, base on there. So I had this laying around in an old box. Box O, box O parts. All right, then we're gonna line this thing up. Try to get it down in here evenly. And let it catch those edges. Kind of going back and forth, side to side. Gonna catch those tangs in there. Get it to pop in place. Okay, on both sides. I think I got it. Oh, oh, it's really squirting out there now. Okay. My son thinks I'm talking to myself. He just came out. Gonna. All right. Hey, I wish it would wear some protective gear, but uh, where are they at? You got across the Limburg or uh, Florissant Road? What? Uh, they're, they're at their mom's house. Uh, at one street. Is it by the dog park over there? Okay. So you just got to cross Washington up there? You going up there? That way? Okay. But pretty much mostly on Durhakey? Okay, right off Durhakey. All right. Okay. My son going to be 18. He's about to lose his new skateboard. He just went inside, and it's rolling down the driveway. I got to save it. I was heading for the street. Okay, got that back together. And what was I getting? A uh, flathead to get all the stuff back together on here. Okay, that was worth the trip. Where's that flathead? I already put it back on and pretty much gonna be done with this one. And like I said, if somebody wants to get the original equipment uh, cables for that, they can. I mean, it's, it's super functional. And actually I was getting this for a guy in mind uh, that does the commercial mowing every day. He was looking for something and this thing's built like a freaking tank I mean, it's well, it's heavy super heavy and It's got these wheels. I mean, these are this is some nice uh, Nice stuff. I mean, it's got these really strong welds. This isn't just like little tack weld cheapy stuff It's some solid American steel, baby It's not a bad mower. So anyways, hey, thanks for watching. If uh, this helped you understand mowers or you uh, have this type of mower and it probably not a lot of videos around of this one, just uh, give a like, uh, thumbs up, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Have a good one. Hey, your uh, skateboard's going down to the street. <laughs> Had to stop it. All right, just dictating through my little uh, valve adjustment on this Briggs & Stratton 6.5. It's uh, 12 
What's the number on that? 12A-999L401. That's the yard machine mower. So I'm going to adjust the valves on this thing. It ran pretty good, but here are the tools. Just had to take the uh, plastic shroud cover off and the uh, intake cover. I'll show you how that came off. But here are the tools that I used to get it off. It's just uh, starting from the right there. It's the Phillips, then a flathead. And then there is a 3 8 that takes off the uh, rocker cover. There are four bolts. And then uh, got a 5 8 for the spark plug. It's one of the deep well um, spark plugs. It fits kind of deep down in the hole. And that was the size of it, 5 8 uh, hex socket. And then for the uh, long screwdriver there. That's a Phillips head. It's kind of blunt, so it's not going to mess anything or gouge anything. I'm going to stick that down in the spark plug hole to determine top dead center and where the valves are in the cycles. And then to the left of that, there's a ratchet wrench with a 11 millimeter socket that fits right on a nut that is uh, right underneath the uh, rocker box cover. And that nut on each, there's a nut on each one of the uh, the rocker arms. And that's all that's needed to adjust the valves. It appears to be the only thing needed. Usually you need two tools to adjust um, when you're adjusting the valve, um, but not in this case. And then I had a 5,000 uh, 5, speeler gauge was on the far left there. So the uh, range on this motor, I looked it up. I'll leave a link in the description for the document you can check out for Briggs & Stratton uh, valve clearances and the specs on those. So here's taking the uh, cover off. I was just kind of going over what I had to do. Uh, simple uh, to get to the rocker cover. Uh, you can just take that one that I put back on there. You can't take just that off. Uh, there is also a, uh, that's only two screws holding that cover on there. So you take that off and there is also the, uh, the intake is that blue cap. It's got the blue cover on it right there. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying here. Uh, when I recorded this originally, the audio was so jacked up, I just had to uh, redo it, so I'm dictating through this. That's me taking the intake, uh, uh, the air filter cover off. You have to take that off to take the main one off. And here's me showing where the spark plug goes. Okay, it's got a real long threaded. You see the uh, grip on that, a lot of threads on it. 5 eighths fits on that, and those are the uh, rocker box cover four bolts. And then I propped up the uh, deck here, put it underneath the toolbox. Uh, but whatever you prop it up with, make sure it's not too far back or it's going to hit the blades as you're turning the blades by hand. So the blade's turning. You don't want to hit your box or whatever you're using to prop it up. So I got the bolts out, showing those again for some reason. Okay, and this is a good time to inspect the oil. They'll have some oil residue. Sometimes it collects in that rocker cover, and that one's definitely do. Looks like the muddy Mississippi down there. Okay, and okay, I, I like showing those four bolts for some reason. <laughs> I, I forgot what I was talking about. Okay, and I wiped it clean before I took that rocker box cover off. All right, and then up top there where the where the uh, break the blade break bale is, I uh, wrapped a rope around that like a strap. And I uh, don't know what I'm showing you here. Okay, that's just where the rocker arms are and the valves and the valve stems. That's the top of the valves, I guess you could call it the stem. And the other end is the actual valve that seals the uh, compression and combustion in there. Okay, it's going to get you a better shot here. Get you closer up, show you what I'm doing here. Lifting it up a little bit probably. There we go. It's a little bit better shot. And so right there you have the... Uh, Rocker arms going across in the middle is this uh, bolt here with an adjusting nut on it. Looks like the only thing to adjust these valves is that one nut. Sometimes they have a little uh, Torx tip in the middle, and you got to hold the Torx tip and the bolt steady and then turn the nut to adjust the valves. But in this case, it looks like you're only having to adjust that one sock, that uh, one nut there, and it's righty tightsy, lefty loosey, and the tighter you get it, the less clearance you should have. And you might want to get a hex wrench on that. It looks like a 10 or 11 or 7 16 or something like that. And hold that stud. That, that stud goes straight through into the block. 
So you might have to, I might have to get a wrench to hold that steady to make sure it doesn't turn as I'm loosening those nuts up back and forth to get the right valve clearance. Okay. And so we're going to determine, let's see if you can figure out, right here is a little test. You know, if you're having a challenge figuring out, uh, you're going to do uh, valve adjustments, which are really not that difficult. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see which port goes to the intake, which port goes to the exhaust. Um, so I'm going to let you try and guess which one's which. Um, looks like they're both tight there. I'm going to go ahead and spin it. And, hey, make a little note in the comments if you got this right. Can you guess which one's the intake and which one's the exhaust? Okay, now I'm turning the blade in the direction of engine rotation. That means the sharp edge should be on the forward edge of the blade as you're turning it. Okay, I'm turning it, I'm turning it, and that is a valve closed. I'm just going to go through the cycles and keep in mind the cycles of the engine intake compression, power, exhaust. When the intake valve is opening, the piston is coming down. As the piston's coming up, that's a compression stroke, number two, and both valves should be closed. And then power stroke, piston coming down, and then the last stroke, exhaust stroke, piston's coming back up, exhaust valve should open. So that is probably what I'm explaining right now in this video. And I think I'm going to turn them a little quicker this time to just keep an eye and see if you, which one is the intake, which one's the exhaust, if you can guess and see which one it is. Now what I do, what I've done for years from time to time is just get it to where both of the, I know both of the valves are fully closed internally, so like they're holding in compression. And that means the rockers should be both loose. I've gapped them just like that. And I've also gapped them to where one is completely open. Let's say the exhaust valve is completely open. That intake valve is going to be completely closed, and that was that would be the one that you would do the gap on. Okay, so have you determined which one is which? So if you can't, here's another thing you can do here is start going around in the direction of rotation. Remember, intake, compression, power, exhaust. So I let's let's just say that uh, that one right there is the intake for, uh, for demonstration purposes. So that we're saying that's intake, and so that's going down. Opening. We're going to continue to rotate the engine, and we're just guessing now because we don't. We're pretending we don't know which one is which, and so that is fully open. And I'm going to continue. So. We're thinking that that valve there, okay, I'm still trying to get you to guess which one's get uh, which one is which. But just remember, intake, compression, power, exhaust. One, two, three, four strokes. Okay. I'm going around, and that is closing now. So if we're guessing that's the intake, then the exhaust, that just, that just started opening. And that's not good. So immediately after that intake, the other valve's opening. That, that is not correct, so that would be the reverse. We got it wrong. So I'm saying that the bottom valve there is the intake valve. And so what I would do to verify that, I think this is where I bring in the screwdriver to this. Yeah, what am I doing? Let's see. I should be grabbing that screwdriver now to show you what's going on. Yep. So I'm going to, we're going to, so think about it. The intake, compression, power exhaust. So I think, okay, I've got that valve closing right there. And that was on the, when the intake valve, the lower valve was all the way open. And as it's closing, that piston is coming up. So this is the compression stroke now. So I had that lower valve all the way open and the spring was squeezed all the way down, meaning the valve's all the way open being pushed down. And then I kept rotating the engine in the direction of rotation. And then with the screwdriver, I verified that the piston was coming up on the compression stroke, and then the intake valve closed. So that is like top dead center where the basically the spark plug fires, and both valves should be closed. So in this position, I'm checking the gap on both of the valves in it, and uh, neither one of them have much of any gap at all. So I'm backing it off. I'm trying to get a four in here, a four thousandths. 
and I'm I'm looking at that bolt, but you know down below you can't see it in this picture, but that same bolt for the upper valve. I've been watching that as I'm loose. Yeah, I'm watching that one right there as I'm loosening up the uh, the adjustment nut to make sure that doesn't spin. You can kind of see it if you follow that socket straight on down to the to the head. You can see that it's not turning. So that's what I'm looking at right there, just making sure that it's not turning. Okay, and I'm gapping this with a like a sloppy four, a sloppy four thousandths, because the uh, the gap is four to six, so five would be right in the middle. So I'm and this is just I'm breathing on this, barely turning it, and it's allowing me to get more of a gap, the proper gap, on that intake valve, and that is the intake valve down there. And I I want to get a little, little more. See, I'm just doing. A little bit then after you get them both right you spin the engine a couple three times let it go through the cycles a few times and go back and do it again you should always check these and make sure that you got them right double check them okay we're gonna do the exhaust now see I'm doing this once at what I think to be pretty close to the top dead center so both of the valves should be closed so I'm leaving the engine in this position now I'll I got the intake valve done, the lower one. Now I'm going to the exhaust. It's very tight. It's not even it's not even allowing a four thousand feeler gauge to get in there, so I'm loosening it as needed to get that four thousandths to drop down in there. And when you're using that feeler gauge, you should hold hold on to it tightly, but just to to feel. You're really going by feel. They call it a feeler gauge for a reason, and just stick it in there, and you should barely feel it tugging, barely a tug on there, and that's what you want barely sliding through that gap, but it, it is able to slide through, okay? So I'm uh, double checking the intake, and I'm gonna spin the engine through a few cycles. That's what I usually do, should be doing that. I really didn't wanna go back and uh, record a voiceover over this, but the uh, I gotta check my microphone. It might be uh, screwing up pretty bad. Okay, so what I'm doing in this case is the upper valve there, the exhaust, I'm getting that like totally open. So the spring is compressed. That means the intake valve should be completely closed. So you can check the gap on that one. I checked it and it's still at the between four to five thousandths. It's a sloppy four. And now I am reversing it. Now I'm getting the uh, intake valve completely, intake valve spring completely compressed. That means the intake valve is totally open. That means that the exhaust valve should be completely closed and that's where you check the gap and that's looking good and I'm going to clean that off real good put the rocker box cover back on there and take a little break put all these parts and pieces back together put the spark plug back in all that stuff and see if I can fire it up And that's me getting ready to fire it up, making sure nothing's underneath it. I might still use this audio if it's any good, hopefully. Um, second time around, the audio was better. I doubt it. And hopefully the one I'm recording right now is uh, going to be okay. But it started right up, and it ran good. And that's it. a couple pulls started on the second try and it ran a little they could probably use a uh, carburetor cleaning it uh, ran last season the guy might probably left some gas in it that carb could be yanked and uh, cleaned out but I'm I'm just calling it good I like this mower this is like one of those mowers I would probably uh, keep and hey if this uh, little tutorial lesson helped you out um, Subscribe, please like the video and leave a comment.